welcome to Feature Turn. Uh, you're going to find that Feature Turn is very similar to Feature Mill, uh, and the only difference that you're going to really know or recognize is that, number one, we're working with two axes, uh, the X and the Z axis, in lieu of three, the X, Y, and Z that we worked with in Feature Mill. So a lot of the applications and a lot of the menus are going to be exactly the same as they were for Feature Mill, so no need to be intimidated, so let's dive right in. The first thing that you're going to do when you open Feature Cam, uh, in this case here, uh, Feature Turn, is you're going to open or create a new part file. And when you do that, you're going to need to specify some information relative to your part. And we'll call this the stock properties. And when you open a new file, Feature Cam does this for you automatically. So we'll select File, and we'll go New. And this time we're doing a, uh, a turn mill setup because Feature Turn uses the turn mill type of part document. So check on Turn Mill and then click on OK. And you'll see that automatically uh, a dialog box or a window opens and asks us some information about our part. So, and it's conversational, so let's follow right along. It says, what shape is the stock? Well, because we're turning, um, our stock is typically going to be round. However, uh, it is possible to start with a block or a uh, square type uh, type of stock in the, in the chuck, as well as a multi-sided stock piece of stock in the chuck. In this case here, you click on the N-sided radio button, and then you specify how many sides the individual part has. So, but for our, our uh, example here, we're going to click on the round radio button. And the Z-axis is going to be the axis of rotation of our part. So, uh, the length of our part we're going to specify at 3 inches. And the outside diameter at 1.250, and we'll leave that as is. And notice that you can also specify if there's a hole in your part. In this case here, there's not, so the inside diameter of our uh, box will will show zero, but if I did have a hole, I would simply enter the inside diameter of that part, so or of that feature. Um, so let's click on next. Um, now it's asking us what type of material that the component is made from, and or that the part is made from. So if you select the drop down uh, window or drop down arrow, you'll see that uh, there are several types of different types of material that you can select from. In this case here. We're going to be using just uh, just aluminum, and our hardness will remain um, the default of 111 on the Brunel scale, and the unit horsepower is going to be 0.3, um, and that's going to stay uh, set to the uh, to the default as well. And we'll click next. Do you want to use multi-axis positioning to machine this part? And for our demonstration, we're simply doing conventional two-axis uh, turning operations. So for uh, for our purposes, we're going to select no. Uh, there is no fourth axis uh, machining that's going to be conducted as part of this uh, as part of this uh, part program. So we click next, and we can give this setup uh, a name, and uh, we're just going to leave it as the default as setup one. Fixture ID will be fifty four part name FM one. We can change this to whatever we want, but in this case here, the default. For this particular example, we'll, we'll leave static at uh, FM1. And we select Next. And it's asking us, what method do you want to use to define the part program zero location for setup one? And we're going to use the current location. And uh, we'll select Next. And which spindle will be holding the part when features in the setup are cut? It will be the main spindle. We'll select Next again. And it's asking us uh, the bottom of the bottommost clamp is located where. So in this case here, we want to make sure that uh, that we specify where the bottom of the bottommost clamp is located to ensure that we don't machine into the uh, into the fit into the uh, into the chuck or other holding device that you might be using. In this case here, we'll leave it set at negative five, and we'll select on, click on finish. Which spindle will be holding the part when the feature in this setup are when the features in this setup are cut? It will be the main spindle. We'll click next, click finish, and we're back to our part. So now uh, we've defined some some basic information about our part, and you can see that information is now loaded. 
to our stock properties. And uh, once it's in, if something changes, you can go ahead, or if you need to make a change or you made a mistake, you can uh, change that information. Notice that um, down here in the uh, bottom box here, this bottom uh, um, X, Y, and Z boxes, you'll see um, that the Z axis is set at 0.05. And what that means is that our part stock uh, is 50 thousandths of an inch extended out beyond the zero uh, axis for this particular part. In other words, um, if we were to make a facing cut at Z axis location zero, we would actually be machining 50 thousandths worth of material. And in this case here, you can set this to whatever you like. Let's just go ahead and adjust it. 50 thousandths is, is just a little bit excessive. We'll, we'll change it to 30 thousandths of an inch or 0 0.03, and then we'll click Apply. And then we hit OK. And we are done setting up uh, or defining all of the parameters of our stock. OK, so once you're into the part program and you decide that something changes with your stock and you need to make some, uh, some revisions to the stock properties set up. So to do that, um, what you're going to do is click on the Part View tab. And you'll see our stock is set up in the Part View tree. And we just simply double click on Stock 1 and our stock properties dialog box opens and we can go back in and define any one or redefine any one of these properties that we uh, set when we initially started this program you know, the length of the workpiece the outside diameter uh, the z location the material um, if uh, the the original stock stock size that we started with um, and shape uh, all of these things can be redefined from this window as well mm -hmm.